At the beginning of the movie, a filmmaker named Radford is walked down the hallway of a psychiatric hospital by two medical staff. They take him to a room where a doctor is waiting for Radford's treatment. As a measure to cure him, the doctor has come up with an idea to show Radford his own directed movie. However, Dr. Wayne doesn't think it's a good idea, as the slasher movie is like an infection, and Radford is obsessed with it. Despite this, they eventually let Radford watch the movie. Later, Radford watches his movie in deep concentration. While watching the film, he behaves like a psychopath and pretends to be a character inside the film. Acting strangely, he bites the flesh from his left wrist and with the spilling blood, writes something on the floor. Some time later, the doctor goes to check on Radford, but to his surprise, he sees blood all over the floor. Suddenly, Radford attacks him from behind and eliminates him. Soon, Dr. Wayne comes back to the hospital but is taken aback by the horrific tragedy. Meanwhile, Radford escapes from the hospital. Five years later, inside a horror movie theater, a staff girl named Bridget puts on a poster of Radford's movie named The Dark Beneath, implying that it's being played soon. Later, another staff member, Kenny, complains to Bridget that the theater hasn't been earning well because of the boring movies. Just after the duo finishes speaking, a gangster-looking couple arrives at the theater and buys tickets. Afterwards, Bridget's little brother, Timmy, also arrives to watch the movie. However, Bridget sends him back, citing that children below 18 shouldn't be watching horror movies. Just after Timmy steps out of the theater, Bridget's boyfriend Josh arrives and asks her to watch the movie with him. Bridget refuses at first, but after a lot of convincing, finally agrees. Inside the cinema hall, they take seats right next to the gangster couple. As the two start making out, Josh's friends arrive and interrupt them. One of Josh's friends reveals that the movie is 40 years old. She continues by saying that, back then, people used to murder each other in reality, as in the film. Outside, Detective Barons has also come to watch the movie. He's there to find clues about the missing Radford. After a while, Kenny starts the projector, and the movie begins. The film opens up with a scene with some friends driving to New York in a minivan. When the tire suddenly goes flat, a boy from among the group heads to a nearby house to ask for help. After reaching the house, the boy finds a deceased animal outside and gets worried. He then rings the doorbell and a lady takes him inside. While the film moves on, another detective joins Barron's and they talk about Radford and his movies. Back in the movie, the boy sees a strange man sharpening his metallic weapon. The man puts on a weird skull mask and suddenly he eliminates the boy and drags him to a dark room. In the lobby of the theater, the lady staff finds out that the counter has run out of drinks and thus asks Kenny to get them from the storeroom. Meanwhile, Bridget decides to head out as she feels uncomfortable watching the gruesome movie. However, Josh quickly pacifies her and convinces her to go back inside. After a while, Kenny, who has gone to the storeroom to get the drinks, is suddenly shown in the movie. Just then, Kenny hears a strange voice and starts running out of fear. To his misfortune, the masked killer comes in front of him and eliminates him brutally with his weapon. Despite this, everyone enjoys the movie as they think it's part of it. They continue to enjoy the movie while one of Josh's friends goes to the toilet. The same scene is displayed on the screen, and just like last time, the boy is cruelly terminated by the masked killer. The lady staff hears the screams from inside the men's toilet and goes to investigate. There, she sees the blood all over the floor and rushes outside in fear. Meanwhile, the lobby of the same movie theater is shown on the screen, and the killer follows the lady staff to the counter. Witnessing this, everyone finally realizes what's happening, so they quickly run outside to inspect the counter, only to find it empty. They then head to the same toilet and find blood splattered everywhere. Panicked, they try to run outside, but the doors are locked and the mobile networks are jammed. As they search the theater, Detective Barons finds Bridget's little brother, Timmy, hiding under one of the seats. Bridget scolds the kid for not obeying orders to stay at home. Later, they all find that the place has been completely sealed and that everyone is trapped inside. Sensing their inevitable doom, everybody becomes scared. While the others are losing their senses because of fear, Detective Barons takes his stand to pacify everyone and requests them to stay together. He says that they'd remain safer if they're united. In the meantime, he recites the story of Ted Radford, starting from the psychiatric ward up to the massacre. He also informs them that Radford became a serial killer after he became obsessed with his own film. While everyone is busy with the conversation, Timmy sneaks into the theater. 
Inside, the masked killer notices Timmy, but doesn't eliminate him. Instead, he throws the little kid in front of everyone. In no time, he then takes one of the detectives hostage and slashes his throat. Enraged, Baron starts to shoot at the killer, which makes him fall inside the theater. On the screen, he can be seen dragging the deceased detective's corpse. As the killer gets away for a while, everyone rushes to the window to get outside. However, the window pane drops shut, crushing the hand of Josh's friend. Hearing the screams, the killer follows them to the room and starts closing in. Barron shoots him multiple times, but the killer is not affected by his bullets. When Barron runs out of bullets, the killer takes advantage and brutally eliminates him and the stuck girl in one strike. On the screen, the killer is drashing Josh's lady friend to his house. It's also revealed that the lady from the start of the movie is in fact the killer's mother, who also happens to be a psychopath. She praises the killer for bringing one more friend to the house. Outside the movie, everyone gathers in the lobby and discusses the possible ways to eliminate the killer. Just then, Bridget advises stopping the movie. They all agree and head to the projector room, but find the door locked from the inside. As an alternative, they try to go through the window, but it's too small for the others to fit. Thus, they send Timmy inside, and while he's crawling forwards, the killer spots him. However, Josh strikes the killer, helping Timmy escape. Soon, Timmy reaches the projector room, while the killer is closing in on Josh to kill him. Little Timmy then removes the plug of the projector. To his surprise, though, the projector does not stop running. Hence, he quickly opens the door and lets the gangster man come inside. In no time, the big man pushes the projector to the ground, stopping the movie and saving Josh. He then picks up the reel and confirms that the killer is still alive. As they all breathe a sigh of relief, the projector mysteriously starts running again. The killer is also back, and this time he eliminates the big gangster. The remaining people escape inside the theater. On the screen, the killer and his mother reveal that they can sense fear inside people and attack those who are afraid. Meanwhile, the killer eliminates another friend of Bridget's and drags her back to his house. Watching all of their friends perish one after another, everyone gets sad. Because of this, one of Josh's friends decides to escape on his own. Elsewhere, the killer finds Timmy alone and starts chasing him, and while doing so, he comes across Josh's friend. He then brutally eliminates him by electrocuting him. Surprisingly, the killer is left unharmed by the current. In the next scene, an enraged Josh sets out to terminate the killer. However, as soon as he goes to strike him with the bat, the killer disappears, and Josh returns back to his room. To his horror, the killer has already got inside the room and taken Bridget hostage. While Josh is trying to talk with Bridget, the killer throws his weapon at Josh's face and punctures his eye. Seeing this, Bridget freaks out and quickly runs to another room and locks herself inside. After Bridget has escaped, the killer starts searching for Timmy, who is hiding in the theater. Sometime after, Bridget arrives at the theater and meets her little brother, Timmy. She informs him that they shouldn't fear the killer because fear is the weak point. She further adds that if they manage to hide their fear, he can't harm them. They close their eyes and sit on the floor to overcome the fear. The same is displayed on the screen and the killer approaches them from behind. As he comes closer, he's surprised that the siblings are not fearing him. The killer then walks away, but just at that moment, Bridget opens her eyes and the killer senses her fear. He quickly comes near and takes her to his home inside the movie. In the next scene, Bridget wakes up to find herself locked in a room where the killer is sharpening his weapon. She somehow manages to escape to another room and spots many injured people there. To her surprise, she finds out that Josh is still alive, but is severely injured. She then quickly goes up to him, but the killer's mother hits her on the head and knocks her out. The next time she opens her eyes, she notices that her little brother is also tied up alongside her. After a while, the killer comes near her and threatens her to fear him, otherwise he'd give her a painful death. After saying this, he starts to pull her nails out from her foot one by one. Initially, Bridget cries out in extreme pain, but then gains control over her pain and fear. Seeing this, the killer gets frustrated and throws Bridget down to the floor. Just then, she finds a sharp tool on the floor, and with it, quickly stabs the killer in the neck. Bridget then immediately runs outside, taking Timmy with her. But before they can get out, the killer's mother drags Bridget to the floor and tries to choke her to death. Just before Bridget takes her last breath, little Timmy stabs the killer's mother from behind and terminates her. The siblings then quickly escape from the house and start running, 
but are shocked to witness the killer chasing them. While running away from the killer, Timmy slips and falls down. At this moment, Bridget realizes that Radford's movie is about to end. She then holds her little brother and shouts at him to run. The movie, Dark Beneath, has come to its end, and at the ending scene, Bridget throws Timmy out of the screen. Just a moment before the projector stops, Timmy comes outside of the movie to the theater, and thus his life is saved. However, the reels are finished, and Bridget is stuck inside the movie with the killer. In the final scene, the police arrive at the theater, and Timmy reports everything to them. He also sadly informs them that his sister is stuck inside the movie. However, the officers don't take his word, as he's just a child. Since they don't search for Bridget or the others, they're stuck forever inside the movie.